Hello, Fight fans. Thank you so much once again for joining us here on HYFN TV. I'm Kyle Dyer, and we are here talking today all UFC. We've got fight night coming up here, as well as since the last time you saw us, we've had big news drop in the UFC, including the return, possibly, of one of the all-time greats in the UFC, and also a little bit of disappointing news, a huge change at the top of the card for next week's pay-per-view. But right now, we're going to talk a little bit more about the UFC fight night coming up this is the Combat Sports Report on HYFN TV. This Saturday, the UFC invades the Sunshine State as Fight Night will take place in Orlando, Florida, and the UFC continues to give us fantastic fights to close out this year with another card packed full of bangers. Normally on this show, we like to talk about the main and co-main events at least, and we will talk about this weekend's headliner, which is Stephen Thompson versus Kevin Holland. But I'm not going to talk about the co-main event, which is going to be Brian Barberina versus Rafael Dos Anjos, because in my mind, the second biggest fight on this card is the third fight on the main card, which is where we'll see number four heavyweight contender Tai Tuivasa as he takes on number five, Sergei Pavlovich. Now, Tuivasa comes into this one trying to bounce back after falling victim to number one heavyweight contender Cyril Gaon via knockout in the third round uh, earlier this year in September. Uh, Tuivasa brings power into the octagon that can match virtually anybody in the promotion and recently he's gone up against some of the best, knocking out Derek Lewis in February and then of course having Cyril Gaon in huge trouble this past September before being finished in the middle rounds of that fight. Don't look for Tuivasa to do a whole lot of grappling in this fight. His game plan is going to be simple in this one, and that's just going to be to end the fight with his hands as quickly as possible. His cardio isn't really great, so he's going to try and need to utilize that power before the gas tank starts to get low, because if he slows down in this one, he is in danger of becoming the next notch on the belt for rising star Sergei Pavlovich. Pavlovich comes into this fight on a four-fight win streak, not having lost since his UFC debut in 2018 when he was knocked out by Alistair Overeem. Most recently, Pavlovich scored the TKO win over Derek Lewis at UFC 277 in July, and a win here would put him into the title conversation. I think that's what we will get in this one. I think uh, what we will see is Pavlovich biding his time early in this fight to try and frustrate Tuivasa and to try and get him uh, a little bit drained and then to go in for that kill. I like Pavlovich to take this either by knockout or by decision. He's never submitted anybody in MMA, so not really something that I think is a danger in this one. Uh, Tuivasa, um, on the other hand, he always has that proverbial puncher's chance but if this goes the distance, I really don't think that he's a good enough boxer purely to score enough to pick up the win in this one. Now, the winner of this fight will be in the heavyweight title discussion, but they're probably going to have to wait one more fight to get a shot because last week, huge news dropped as it was announced that Francis Naganu is targeting a return to the Octagon in March at UFC 285, over a year in the making at that time, and his opponent could be none other than UFC great John Jones. It's important though to temper our excitement when we talk about this fight and the possibility of it happening uh, because while this is a dream matchup for a number of reasons, uh, like John Jones moving up to the heavyweight division for the first time, having the most, uh, the most complete skill set uh, by far of anybody that Francis Ngannou has ever faced, there are still a number of hurdles that the UFC needs to clear before this is a done deal. Francis Ngannou still is in the midst of contract disputes with the UFC. John Jones has always had, you know, those kind of legal issues in the past, um, issues with PEDs, even drug testing that have jeopardized his fights. Um, you know, we've talked about John Jones coming back in the past, but those have never really solidified. So, you know, really want to make sure that this one is inked and the ink is really dry on that contract before we get too excited about this fight. But the general consensus here is that the both fighters are motivated enough to, uh, to get the talks this far. So I'm hopeful that all of this is going to come to fruition. Be sure of one thing, we will keep you posted on this on the Combat Sports Reports as this continues to develop. The main event this Saturday will be an intriguing matchup between two fighters in must-win situations for very different reasons. 
as we see number six welterweight contender Stephen Wonderboy Thompson facing off with Kevin Trailblazer Holland. Thompson comes into this fight again as number six, but he's kind of number six by default. Really, he has this rank because a lot of the guys in front of him lost. Um, at least his losses have been to quality opponents. He lost his last two fights, both occurring in 2021, when he dropped decisions against current number four, Bilal Muhammad, and current number five, Gilbert Burns. Holland, however, Kevin Holland is unranked in this matchup due to being still relatively new to the 170 pound weight class. Remember, he started his career at 185 in the middleweight division, but if Thompson loses this fight, he is in danger of dropping outside the top 10, and at his age, could mean being relegated to the dreaded gatekeeper role. So keep this to keep this from happening, Thompson's likely going to follow the same blueprint as he usually does, and that's to use strikes that are unorthodox by MMA standards. He uses a traditional karate type stance where he keeps his hands down low and kind of a, a side facing stance, throwing strikes from all angles, using a lot of kicks, straight standing side kicks, low leg kicks in the same manner, and strikes with his hands that come in from different angles that MMA fighters typically don't see because uh, he doesn't have a boxing background. He's a fifth degree black belt in Tetsushin Ryu Kempo, which is a striking discipline that usually is not seen in MMA, but Thompson is nearly a master at this striking discipline, which is why he's given guys so much, uh, so much trouble in his career. He fought for the welterweight title back in 2016 and 2017, both against Tyron Woodley, one ending in a draw and the other in a, a decision loss. So he's been a championship level fighter in his career. He's trying to get back to that level. Kevin Holland, on the other hand, is going to try and counter that with his own brand of seldom seen striking in MMA as he's a second degree black belt in Kung Fu. I think that's how he's gonna open this fight. Um, he's gonna use that striking to feel out Thompson's game, see where he's at this, uh, this evening on Saturday. I don't think that's necessarily where his path to victory is uh, for Holland. I think Holland is really gonna want to use, uh, to dig into his bag of tricks and use his Bra uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu game. He is also a black belt in that discipline and does have six submission victories to his name. Uh, a lot of those did take place earlier in his pro career, but he's had some in the UFC too. So I think that if Kevin Holland can get this fight to the ground and keep it there, he's got a chance to use the ground and pound to open up some of those submission attempts. Thompson is a good scrambler though, so he's going to do everything in his power to keep this fight off the mat and on his feet where he's most comfortable and where he can make it more interesting. At the end of the day, I think Thompson's style is more of a point striking style. Holland has more tools in his bag to score the finish, which is ultimately what I think is going to happen in this one. If the fight goes to the scorecards, it could go either way because Thompson is the guy. He's going to stay active. He's going to stay throwing and moving and it's gonna be difficult for him to get hit. But his chin has shown uh, some aging, some wear and tear on those, uh, so those tires, so to speak. You know, he was knocked out back in 2020 um, and knocked out cold to the point where he didn't know where he was after the fight. So that's something to, to look for in this one. If Holland catches him, he could knock Thompson out. If, call, if uh, Holland gets it to the ground, he could submit him or, or use the ground and pound to finish it. I really don't see a path to victory through a finish for Steven Thompson. If, he, if he's gonna win, it's gonna be on the scorecards at the end of the fight. A five rounds is really a long time to hang in there with Kevin Holland, a guy with that many ways to beat you. So I think Kevin Holland picks up this win. Uh, I think he gets it done um, before, before it goes to the judges and picks up the win to break into the welterweight rankings. And now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the rest of the card. <laughs> A lot of fights coming up on this card. Make sure you've got your snacks. Make sure you've got plenty of beer or soda or whatever it is you like to drink when you watch the fights. We've got 14 fights coming up on this card. Kicking off at 8 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Mountain for the prelims, we've got a women's strawweight bout where Yasmin Warigi will take on Estella Nunez. Moving on, second fight of the night in the featherweight division for the men, Marcelo Rojo versus Francis Marshall. Next up in the lightweight division for the men, Natan Levy takes on Gennaro Valdez. Moving along, our first ranked matchup of the evening will be in the women's flyweight division, where number 13, Tracy Cortez, takes on number 15, Amanda Hibas. Featherweight division for the men come up next, Darren Elkins squares off with Jonathan Pierce. In the lightweight division, Michael Johnson next will take on Mark DeKise. 
Next up, in the lightweight division for the men, Clay Guida versus Scott Holtzman. Make sure you watch this one in between rounds very carefully. Clay, Clay Guida is known for burping in between rounds. Pretty funny. Check it out on YouTube if you have a chance. Just look up Clay Guida burp. Very funny stuff. Next on the bill will be a women's strawweight bout. Number 12, Angela Hill, taking on number 13, Emily Ducote. The featured prelim of the evening is in the men's welterweight division where Nico Price takes on Phil Rowe. And then we'll have the main card, 10 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Mountain Time, kicking off in the middleweight division with Eric Anders versus Kyle Dacus. Next up will be a middleweight bout with number eight, Jack Hermanson, taking on Roman Delize. And then, of course, one of our featured fights that we spotlit tonight, we've got a uh, heavyweight bout, number four, Tai Tuovasa versus number five, Sergei Pavlovich. The co-main event of the evening in the men's welterweight division is Brian Barbarina versus number seven, Rafael Dos Anjos. And then, of course, our main event in the welterweight division is number six, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson versus unranked Kevin Holland. And that's it for the Combat Sports Report this week. Catch us next week when we talk about uh, when we talk about our recap of Fight Night this Saturday. And also next week we're going to preview the last UFC pay-per-view of the year. And it comes to us, it's a little bit bittersweet. It was supposed to be the highly anticipated rematch between Yuri Prohaska, who is the champion, and Glover Teixeira on that epic five-round battle that we saw earlier this June. Unfortunately, that fight is off, and we are not going to see Yuri Prohaska for a very long time, it sounds like. Um, middle of last week, it broke that Yuri Prohaska has, um, has, has experienced a severe shoulder injury, and out of respect for the other fighters in the division in the UFC, he has decided to vacate the men's light heavyweight championship belt. He will not be the champion. He will not be in action for at least a year. The most interesting thing about this was that Glover Teixeira is not fighting for this championship. The replacement fight is going to be Jan Blahovic, who was also a former light heavyweight champion, and he's going to be facing, uh, facing off against Ma uh, Magomed Ankaleo. Now, this is a, an intriguing matchup. We're gonna, I'm not going to talk about it much tonight, um, but, but we are going to talk about it and preview that next week. So be on the lookout for that. Glover Teixeira was offered a fight against Ankalaev. He turned it down. He said, I'm ready to fight Blahovich right now, but Ankalaev is a very different opponent. I need more time to prepare for him. I'll fight him in Brazil um, first part of next year. The UFC, uh, UFC said, no dice, it's now or never. And you know, you gotta give Glover to share a credit. He didn't sell himself out. He said, I'm not ready for this fight. I'm not gonna go out there and, uh, and go fight a guy like Ankalaev when I'm not ready for it. You know, Glover to share is 43 years old. So you gotta wonder how many more of these opportunities he's gonna get. He's still up there. He's still gonna get a shot if he wins his next fight, but he's gotta win that next fight. And we don't know who that's gonna be yet. So we'll keep an eye on that here over the next few months as well. You stay tuned into us, HYFN TV, for the Combat Sports Report. And if you miss us live, that's okay. You can catch us HYFNTV.com on demand or on your Roku device for all of your combat sports news internationally and nationally right here, HYFN TV. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next week.